Peace and salutations, family, and welcome to today's broadcast of First Word from the Pastor Study. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ Love Ministries. And I'm so thankful that you did not think of robbery today, amen, to join us for a word from the Lord. Uh, it's the first Sunday in October, amen. And two things are taking place at this time. The first thing is that we are concluding today. We've been doing a series of what I call casual ministry, amen, not dressed up. And that's one of the things that God put in my heart when uh, he gave me this vision of ministry was that we, you know, we were to be more casual, more inviting to the poor of, not only the poor of heart, but the poor of pocket, amen. I don't want anybody to feel that we're more about being dressed up uh, than, you know, loving our brothers ourselves. That was the first thing. The second thing is that today marks our anniversary month, amen, uh, to the degree that we were down for a little while, um, but we started back having our sermons in our Telebible school um, a year ago last October, amen. And here we are, um, here we are now a year later and we're still here and we're going strong, amen. And um, also if God allows me to see uh, this Wednesday, amen, uh, I will have reached the plateau of my 59th year on this earth, amen. And I'm just trusting God and looking forward to God. Uh, for what he has coming up in the uh, future. As as a lot of you know, we'll be moving to Denver, Colorado, amen. And uh, we did have a time uh, where we were doing AISI ministries out there, amen, as iron sharpens iron. And we were doing, um, we were doing live ministry on the, on the streets in the morning Bible study, amen, every morning at 6 a.m., so or uh, at sun up, amen. And we may do that again yet, and still we'll see. Uh, it depends on the leading of the Lord at the, in that great season, amen. But now I'm going to ask, as we prepare to get into today's word, if you would kindly stand in the gap as I approach the throne of grace, amen. Merciful Father God, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Father, thanking and praising you for this day. And just one more opportunity to do something right in your sight, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you right now, Father, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do, in the name of Jesus, God. Now, Father, I pray that you sit me down and you stand up, O oh God. Decrease me and increase you, none of me and all of you. Instruct my mind and direct my vocal cords on what you would have me say and do before these your sheep. And transform me, Father, into the man you would have me be in Christ Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. Father, I pray that you move through this digital realm right now with power and a testimony in the name of Jesus, God. I pray that you have your way on today as you move like a mighty rushing wind, O oh God. And I pray that the word that comes forward today does not fall on deaf ears, God, but is imbued in the hearts and the minds of the listeners so that we may be more than just hearers of the word, Father, but doers of the word in the name of Jesus, God, again, I say, have your way, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, and I ask that you help this, Father, this broken vessel, this imperfect servant of God, created me a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me, O oh Father, for it's me, it's me, it's me who's standing in the need of prayer. As I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, it is in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we pray. And let all the believers of God say, Amen. Once again, we're not going to be long before you. 
this series has been about what I call hit it and quit it. We just want to give the word and a short scripture, hit the word, and, and we're done, amen. Um, and today will be no different. We're coming again from the Old Testament, and I'm looking in the book of Jeremiah, amen, just so you are made aware. Jeremiah was a young man. Uh, a lot of the prophets that God chose in the Old Testament were not young men, but Jeremiah was. And at the time, uh, Jeremiah was called to be a prophet, amen, it was not a healthy proposition. Uh, the Hebrews were in the custody of the Babylonians, and King Nebuchadnezzar at the time was large and in charge, amen. And they had their own gods that they believed in, and they did not want to hear about this God of the Hebrews, amen. And Jeremiah, knowing this, was not interested in being a prophet because that would surely spell either getting beaten or jailed or murdered or all of the above, amen. However, in his own words, he says that it was like a fire within his bones that he could not keep within anymore. And, and, and he had to preach the word of God. He had to speak as God instructed him to speak. And we are in the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. And we're going, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version, amen. Verses 5 through 10, that's Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. And verse 5 says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhibit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land which is not inhabited, verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And, and with mind on that particular reading, it's been heavy on my heart, especially in the last couple of days. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who has felt these things in their life. Amen. I, I just want to tell you that now is the time where we must try to pass the test. Amen. Try to pass the test. Try to pass the test. Yes, praise God. You see, because... Remember the word testimony. If you don't have a test, how in the world can you have a testimony? Praise God, because that's what he needs. We're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about that. Amen. You may recall that about uh, a year ago, I may have told you about the very place where I sit at this moment. My mind, my earthly mind was thinking about being economical and moving from this place where I am now into a smaller place within the complex and saving a hundred dollars a month. But it did not set well with my soul. 
I was not comforted by that feeling. Rather, I was worried. So I invested upon a couple of my confidants, my contemporaries at the time, and ran it by them and asked their opinion what they thought I should do. And still, after speaking to them, it got to a point where I had to deliberate on my own, where I had to reason amongst myself. And the answer became clear before me that I needed to be comfortable. I needed to be where I was because God had a purpose for it, which has been taking place over the last year. And I had to do something that is so difficult yet so easy. And that was to trust God. And when I decided that I was going to stay in this place, that I had made my home of the time, where I had set things the way that I want them, because initially my studio here was where I slept, where I had my TV, where I did most of my living in this space. I reasoned that I wanted to move it into the larger room with the larger uh, closet, amen. And at that point, I had my desk, my original desk, uh, set up in the living room. This is where I did my studying for school. It was difficult because prior to that, I had always done my studying in the bedroom because somebody else had been here with me. But as I started to invest and change things to my liking and purchase items which I needed, like pots and pans and plates and having my own things and personalizing this space, starting to get the furniture that I didn't have, uh, changing this room from a bedroom to a study in as much as where I came to do my school work, from a study to a pastor's study and recording studio, where when the COVID came, praise God, I had a place where I was able to get equipment like you see now where I can record my message and broadcast it out to you on various mediums such as my website or YouTube or Facebook, amen. Uh, it, it was not an easy feat, but this was the mission that had to be undertaken. And when I decided that I would keep this place and formulate these things, a great feeling of peace overcame me and trust and believe this feeling of peace that came is the feeling of peace that the world cannot give you. Only God can give you. And I had to force my worldly mind. Yes, I am a pastor. Yes, I've been doing this for about 20 years, but I'm still a man. I'm still a human being. I still fall to sin from time to time. And I need to let you know that I had to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. I had to be what I proclaimed to be. And I forced myself to trust God. And I stopped by to tell you today that he has found a way out of no way every single time. My bills have been paid. I am not evicted. I have got a roof over my head. Hundred dollars, so what? He found that hundred dollars and presented it to me. Praise God. He said that he would set my enemies at my footstool. Amen. He said he would prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. But the thing of it is, 
as is always the case when it comes to the things of God, I had to change me before God could operate. Amen. We, we talk all the time about prayer changes things. The first thing prayer changes is you. Amen. It has to start by changing you. We have to unlearn what we have learned in this selfish world of which we live. This world that tells us that we control our destiny, that we have it all figured out, that we can make our own way. But if we can make our own way, that would mean that we have control over every single thing that's out here in this world. And that is utterly impossible. We got to try to pass this test because the test hinges on this. We should know that faith. Remember, let's talk about Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Faith is one of the major things that God loves. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that without faith is it is impossible to please God. We must come to him believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, let me stress that word, diligently seek him. Glory be to God. Faith is the key that unlocks the power of God that he can move in your life. The problem is, especially for us adult folks, we have become cynical because we have thought about and learned to trust men. We trust human beings. We trust people to get things done for us. I'm going to trust my employee to make it to the bank and deposit the money. What if the employee steals your money? The employee can be unfaithful. And God looks at us as the employees and he watches us when we are unfaithful. When we put all of our faith, trust, and hope in ourselves and mortal things instead of coming to him, the father who created us, the one who can make a way out of no way, the one who has made us above and not beneath, the one who made us the head and not the tail, the one who said he will never leave or forsake us. Oh, glory to God. I wish somebody knew today just how much the Father believes in us, yet we can't believe in him in the proper manner or fashion. Glory be to God. Even today, once again, I am, I have taken this weekend where I was frustrated about a situation that I'm facing. And at that point, at, at a certain point Friday, I said, you know what? This is on God now. There's no more I can do. I've done everything I can do. I should have gave this one up in the beginning, but now I, I'm laying it at his feet. And my mind is racing because that's what the human mind and the earth does. It races and it wants to doubt and it has anxiety. And I'm fighting that tooth and nail as many of you are and many of you should be. But in the end, God will prevail. Because when I really sit back and look at things, God has not failed me ever. Not once, not twice, not three times, no time at all has God failed. But rather, it's been me who has failed him. How many out there today are strong enough to say that they have failed God before? I can do it because I know it to be true, and God loves the truth. I have failed God before. And sadly, I will probably fail him again. Sadly. 
I pray not. I pray somewhere down the line I will find the strength. I pray that I will. I have to force myself to trust God because if I don't force myself to trust God, I'll never try to pass the test. I have to force myself to do this. And you do too. Because he tells us if we know him, we can't fail. If, if God before you, who can be against you? If you know him, by all means, try to pass the test. In the name of Jesus. And right now, I'd like to help you with the very first part of trying to pass the test. Because we live in a world right now that's upside down and sideways. We live in a world of the Armageddon. We live in a world of distrust and hate. We live in a world of difficulties. We live in a questionable time. And we live in a world at a time where we need God to lead us in the way. For he himself said in John chapter 3, he said that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that those who believe in him shall not see death but see life everlasting. For he sent his son into the world, not to destroy it, but to save it. In the same book, John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to the Father except through me. So here's the thing, before you can even try to pass the test, you've got to know Jesus Christ. Please let me help you do that today. Please. We don't have to put on a formal dress. We don't have to go anywhere. Because at the end of the day, it's not really about me and you. Rather, it's about you and your spiritual father who created you. Because that needs to be your primary relationship. And without that personal relationship, there can be nothing else. All you got to do is mean it from your heart. That's it. Mean it from your heart. I know I'm not the only one out here who is tired of stuff, who may be frustrated about things, who may be looking for change and answers. I know I'm not the only one. I know that I went through a time where I joined the church and the church was doing false teaching. They were money focused and not people focused, amen. And in that church, I was hurt. Glory be to God. Yes, I was hurt. And I fell away. I fell away behind that. But you know, we pray. We pray that the harvest will come. We pray that God will bring forward more workers in the vineyard. You can come back home. You can. Let me help you today. We're going to pray a prayer. One of the most important prayers you'll ever pray. And if you mean it from your heart, it will be done. Are you ready? Then repeat after me. Father, I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. 
but I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived a life without sin and died on the cross for my sins. But you raised him from death. And now he sits in heaven interceding on my behalf. Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord, my Savior, my Master, and my friend. Holy Ghost, seal me until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said those words for the first time today, let me be the first to congratulate you and welcome you into the body of Christ, the family of God. You are now a heir of God and a joint heir of Christ. Be holding up all of the benefits that come within, amen. If you said those words today to obtain the quickening to come back into the body of Christ, let me be the first to welcome you, amen, back into the family of Christ. And I want you to know that we love you and we missed you and we need you. Because many are called, but the chosen of few. Now I want to tell you something very important. There is nothing, nothing that God wants more than for us to love him as much as he loves us. He created us. He loves us in and out. That's why he sent his only son to die on that cross so we could be with him again in the kingdom of heaven. And he wants us to love him as much as he loves us. But as in any long-term relationship that's based on love, love comes through knowing. And the only way to know God is through his word. And we want to help you with that too. Every Wednesday night, we have our Telebible School. And you need a Bible preaching and teaching man to show you the way in God's word. Not one that's gonna use the word to get you to pay more money out of your pocket, but somebody who's going to explain what his word means to you via the Holy Spirit and help you to find your way. Every Wednesday night we have our Telebible School. You go to our website, All Christ's Love, Dot org. No capitals, no apostrophes, just all Christ's love dot org. And once you get there, go to the tab that says Telebible School. Scroll down to where it says in green letters, click here for Telebible School, and it will let you into the waiting room. And once I see you there, I will gladly let you in. And the beauty of this is that it's free. Amen. And and we will only ask that you would you know, if you know somebody that could benefit from that, make sure you tell your neighbor and have them join us too, amen. You can even have a, a, a school party, a telebible school party at your house uh, where you can come and everybody can participate, amen. I, I have no problem with that. The, the Lord wants us to rejoice, amen, and be happy in his word, amen. Our telebible school is every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, that's 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Amen. And we'd love to see you there. Praise God. 
rejoicing with us and getting the word together. We take that deeper walk and we want you to be part of that too. Praise God. I want to thank those who took time out of their day and thought it not robbery to watch this word from the Lord. Amen. And not only those now, but those in the future who will watch this word. Praise God. Thank you so much. Until we meet again, this is the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, senior pastor and founder of All Christ Love Ministries. Thanking you for watching today's broadcast from a first word from the pastor study. And just know one thing. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you and we'll see you again.